Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss regarding lubrication systems used in internal combustion engines. The objective of this session is to study different lubrication systems used in internal combustion engines and the outcome can be stated as the student will be able to explain different lubrication systems used in internal combustion engines. So basically the points which I am going to cover in this topic are engine friction and lubrication. The different points which will be covered are listed on the screen that is friction, lubrication, different lubrication systems such as mist lubrication system, wet sump lubrication system and dry sump lubrication system. So let us discuss the points one by one. First that is engine friction. The friction is generally referred as the force acting between surfaces in relative motion. In IC engines, frictional losses are mainly due to the sliding as well as rotating parts. As we know, in IC engines, there is a piston which is reciprocating inside the cylinder. So, it will make a sliding contact between piston rings and the cylinder walls. That is one thing. And the other thing is a rotating parts. That is, the crankshaft will be rotating through main bearings or inside the main bearing. So, it will make a rotating pair. So, rotating as well as sliding contacts are there. So, there is friction. So, now it is the power or that is friction is the power absorbed due to the relative motion of different bearing surfaces such as piston rings, main bearings and camshaft bearing etc. Since there are a number of moving parts, the frictional losses are comparatively larger in reciprocating engines. And to minimize these losses, we use lubrication. So that is the necessity of lubrication. So lubrication is essential to reduce the frictional as well as wear between the components in an engine. Lubrication is an art of admitting a lubricant that is oil or grease between two surfaces that are in contact and in relative motion. The main functions or basically functions performed by lubrication are first to reduce the friction and wear between the moving part as well as energy losses and thereby increase in life of the engine. Second to provide sealing action that is lubricating oil helps the piston rings to maintain an effective seal against the high pressure gases in the cylinder from leaking out into the crankcase. The third is to cool the surfaces of by carrying away the heat generated in the engine components. Fourth one is to clean the surfaces by washing away carbon and metal particles caused by wear. So this was regarding lubrication. Now moving to the towards the next point that is different lubrication systems. The main function of lubrication system is to provide sufficient quantity of cool filtered oil to give positive and adequate lubrication to all the moving parts of an engine. The various lubrication systems used in internal combustion engine are first mist lubrication system, then wet sump lubrication system and dry sump lubrication system. Let us discuss these systems one by one. So first mist lubrication system. This system is used where can crankcase lubrication is not suitable basically in two stroke engines as the charge is compressed in crankcase it is not possible to have lubricating oil in the sump hence mist lubrication is adopted in practice as we know that in the two stroke engines the fuel itself is stored in the uh, sump so we cannot store again lubricating oil there okay so, in such engines, lubricating oil is mixed with the fuel, usual ratio being 3 to 6 percent. The oil and the fuel mixture are inducted through carburetor. The fuel is vaporized and oil in the form of mist goes via crankcase into the cylinder. The oil which strikes crankcase walls lubricates the main and main and connecting rod bearings and the rest of oil lubricates the piston, piston rings and cylinder. The main advantage of this system is its simplicity as it has no extra components like 
uh, engine oil pump, filter, strainer, etc. And the second one is the low cost as the absence of these components like uh, pump, filter and strainer. The basically main disadvantage is the heavy exhaust smoke generated because of the burning of the lubricating oil. As oil and fuel are mixed, obviously the lubricating oil is going to get burned with the fuel and it will cause the heavy exhaust smoke. That is the main disadvantage. Again, during close throttle operations, engine surfaces uh, or rather engine will suffer from insufficient lubrication as the fuel supply is less. That is the second disadvantage and third one is the corrosion of bearing surfaces. So, this was regarding the first lubrication system that is mist lubrication system. We will move towards the second lubrication system that is wet sump lubrication system. In the wet sump lubrication system, the bottom of the crankcase contains oil, an oil pan or sub from which the lubricating oil is pumped to various engine components by a pump. After lubricating these parts, the oil will flow back to the sump by gravity and again it is recirculated. The basic components of this system are pump, strainer, pressure regulator, filter, etc. The, there are different types of wet sump lubrication system as listed on the screen, splash system, splash and pressure system and pressure feed system. Let us again go one by one. So, first is splash system. So, figure shows the uh, splash system. So, this type of lubrication system is used in light duty engines. Okay. The oil or rather duplicating oil is charged into the bottom of the engine crankcase. As you can see here it is the oil pan or we can call it as a sump. Here oil is uh, lubricating oil is stored okay. and the oil is charged into the bottom of the engine crankcase and maintained at a predetermined level. The level is also maintained. The oil is drawn by pump and delivered through the distributing pipe. So, here we can see the strainer. So, it will uh, give the clean oil to the oil pump and the oil pump will supply this oil through these dotted uh, distribut distribution lines to uh, the pipes which are extending the length of crankcase into the splash troughs. These are uh, splash troughs you can see. So, these are splash troughs or we can say oil troughs. So, to these oil troughs the oil is distributed through the extending lines okay. and again the oil level in the troughs is also maintained at predetermined level. A splasher or a dipper is provided under each connecting rod. We can see here this is the splasher or a dipper which is provided at the big end of the connecting rod and it dips inside the splash troughs. Okay. So, when a splasher or dipper is provided under each connecting rod cap which dips into the oil trough at every revolution of the crankshaft and oil is splashed over the interior of the crankcase into the pistons on the exposed portion of the cylinder walls etc. Okay. A hole is drilled through connecting rod cap through which oil will pass to the bearing surfaces. Oil pockets are also provided to catch the splashed oil over all main bearings and over camshaft bearings. The oil dripping from the cylinders is collected in the sump where it is cooled by air or we can use separate oil cooling system and the cooled oil is again recirculated through the system. So, figure shows uh, this dotted line as a distributing pipeline. So, oil pump will give the oil through this distributing pipeline towards to the oil troughs and as the crankshaft revolves continuously a dipping of this dipper of connecting rod will splash the oil. As you can see here, the oil is splashed all over the parts and this splashed oil will reach to each and every uh, component which is in contact with the other component, either sliding contact or uh, rotating contact and the drained oil will again collect it to the sum. Okay. The next system is splash and pressure system. 
here lubricating oil is supplied under pressure to main camshaft main and camshaft bearings so again he can, we can see here so this is the oil sum where the lubricating oil is provided so oil pump again through distributing lines which are again shown by dotted lines will be provided to main bearing so this is the main bearing this is the main bearing so to these main bearings the oil is provided and again there are some uh, uh, streams of oil are available here unlike the previous system which was using the oil troughs here the stream of oil is directly uh, uh, passed because the oil is pressurized passed to the dipper of the connecting rod and it will splash again the oil to the different components so main bearing and camshaft see here again camshaft bearings are available here so camshaft bearings are also again lubricated by using this distributed line but the other components such as the sorry such as the camshaft uh, tappet valves and the uh, here the piston rings etc are uh, lubricated through the splashes of oil so here it is the combination of splash as well as pressurized system the next system is pressure feed system in this system oil is drawn from the sump and forced to all the main bearings of the crankshaft through distributing channels uh, so we can see here again oil is present in the oil sump again oil pump will give the oil to the all the uh, main bearings as well as crankshaft as well as camshaft through the distributing pipeline and it, it, these are all connected so there is no splashing here like in previous system again a pressure relief wall also is fitted near the delivery point of the pump which opens when the pressure in the system attains the predetermined value an oil hole is drilled in the crankshaft from the center of each crank pin to the center of the adjacent main journal so we can see here these are oil hole drilled so this is the crank bearing and this is the main bearing so between the center of the main journal to the crank bearing the channels are drilled so that oil can flow through those channel and again through which the oil can pass from one main bearing to the crank pin bearing from the crank pin it re reaches the piston pin bearing through the hole drilled in the connecting rod the cylinder valves tappet rollers pistons and piston rings are lubricated by oil spray from around the piston pin and the main and connecting rod bearing so we can see here again the connecting rod the big end is provided with holes through which the oil pressurized oil will come out or it is also called as end leakage and it will directly lubricate the piston rings piston pin and the tappets present on the camshaft so this is the third system that is pressure feed system now the final system that is dry sump lubrication system so basically difference between these two system is wet sump lubrication system will be having uh, oil in the pan but as we can see in the diagram in dry sump lubrication system we are not having any oil stored in the sump this is the sump or rather we can say uh, crankcase the oil will be having in a supply tank so the separate tank will be provided so in this system supply of oil is carried in an external tank an oil pump draws oil from the supply tank and circulates it under pressure to the various bearings of the engine as we can see here we are having a supply tank inside which the oil will be stored so there is an oil pump which draws oil and it will be uh, passing through oil cooler to the all the bearings of the engine like main bearings crank pin bearings camshaft bearings etc so oil will go to all those points and then from there it will again due to gravity will be collected at the dry sump oil dripping from the cylinder and the bearings into the sump is removed by scavenging pump so it will collect it will be collected in the crankcase or sump and it will be again 
removed from there by using this scavenging pump and which in turn oil is passed through again filter so it will pass this oil to the filter and it will supply it again back to the fuel supply tank so the oil is prevented from accumulating in the base of the engine so here we are going to prevent the accumulation of oil at the sump so it is called as a dry sump lubrication system okay. so capacity of scavenging pump is always greater than the oil uh, supply pump so in this system filter with a bypass valve is placed so here we can see filter with bypass valve is placed in between the scavenging pump and supply tank if the filter is clogged as we know the oil coming from the system or uh, dripping of the system will be containing the impurity or contaminating like uh, metal particles etc carbon particles so there are chances that this filter may get clogged so the pressure relief valve is opened and permit the oil to bypass through filter and come to the supply tank a separate oil cooler with water or air may be uh, as a cooling medium is usually provided in the dry sump system to remove the heat from the oil so basically these are the different lubrication systems which we have gone through so uh, just for a quick recap we can uh, say uh, there are different lubrication system like mist lubrication system wet sump lubrication system dry sump lubrication system again mist lubrication system is used basically in two stroke engines where oil uh, lubricating oil is mixed with the fuel as in uh, crankcase lubrication is not possible in wet sump lubrication system again we have gone through the th three different systems like splash lubrication system splash and pressure lubrication system and pressure feed lubrication system so there uh, for light uh, capacity engines we can go for wet sump lubrication system uh, where we can uh, store the lubricating oil in the crankcase then the last one that is dry sump lubrication system so th such systems are used in uh, heavy duty engines like uh, one engine which can be used in racing cars so in racing cars such dry sump lubrication system is incorporated okay thank you